Greetings, fellow mathematicians. This is a standard trigonometric substitution problem that many Calc 2 students struggle with. So we're gonna take our time and go through it at a slow pace. Now this is difficult primarily for algebra reasons. And likely your algebra course was a while ago and you forgot a lot of the fundamentals. And here, one of the difficulties students encounter is recognizing that there is even a radical or square root at all. So let's go ahead and first start with the expression x squared plus nine to the three halves power. And let's go ahead and simplify that to first recognize that there is a square root. So we're gonna think of three over two, that power, we're gonna think of it as a half times three. So notice basic exponent rules, the outer power three multiplies to the inner power, three times a half gives you the three halves power. All right, and now we're gonna recognize the one half power as being equivalent to a square root. And that's why we have a square root or radical here, recognizing this instead as the square root of x squared plus nine cubed. Now all the technical rules for rational powers from algebra, we have over here, the basic version, x raised to a fractional or rational power, m over n. You think of that as the nth root of x to the m. And as long as x is non-negative, you can switch the order and equivalently think of that as the nth root of x all to the nth power. And that's what we're using here where the nth power on the outside is three. All right, now that's gonna make it easy for us to determine our substitution. We have the square root of x squared plus a number, and that's gonna to correspond to a tangent substitution. The number inside with x squared is nine, nine's three squared, so we're gonna be using our substitution as x equals three times tangent theta. All right, so we're recognizing a is three, and our substitution is three times tangent theta. All right, I always calculate the differential immediately when I write down my substitution. So dx comes out to three, secant squared theta d theta. And we're gonna wanna use the substitution to eliminate the radical here. And we have to be careful because there's going to be an outer power of three that we're gonna to have to account for. So let's go through first the usual work on getting the square root to cancel, and then we'll plug that back in and cube it. So let me set this up already. As something cubed, and what we're going to simplify, the something is the square root of x squared plus nine. All right, this is all the standard work. We're gonna take our substitution, x equals three times tangent theta. We're gonna plug that in. So don't forget to square each part. You'll get nine times tangent squared theta plus nine. Because you've gone through a few problems already, you know you can factor nine out from within the square root. So I'll write this as the square root of nine times tangent squared theta plus one. And if you've gone through the previous problems that I have, you know we always use a Pythagorean identity at this step. And here, tangent squared theta plus one, that equals secant squared theta. All right, and the square root is about to cancel. Again, we're taking our time and writing everything down. Here, we're gonna write that as the square root of nine times secant squared theta. And here's the key step. The square and the square root cancel. So we get this as three secant theta. 
All right. Now, it's one thing to see the work here as we're going through it here, but what I'm doing is breaking a complicated problem down into easy pieces. And I might be thinking, I don't know how to simplify x squared plus nine to the three halves power all at once with this. And many students find difficulties with that, taking your trig substitution and plugging it directly into there. But what I'm doing is basically splitting this into several simple calculations. So first, I'm rewriting this using some basic power rules or rules of exponents. And now I'm gonna be simplifying the inside, which I'm doing down here off to the side. So here, a good tip, do some side calculations. And this is a side calculation. Now, how do we make use of this? The square root of x squared plus nine inside the brackets with the power of three on the outside, we just simplified that to three secant theta. And that's what we're gonna be plugging in there inside those brackets, three, times secant of theta. Now, as long as you accounted for that outer power of three, now we can cube each part. And our denominator, the original radical expression, x squared plus nine to that rational power, three over two, that's gonna simplify to three cubed, 27. Times secant cubed of theta. And that is pretty much all of the standard difficulties many Calculus two students encounter with this problem. All right, the rest of it is straightforward compared to the other trig substitution problems. So we're gonna replace our denominator with 27 times secant cubed. And again, best tip I can give you, do two or three side calculations instead of just plugging everything directly in to the original integral. All right, so let's again, take our time with this. Our denominator, x squared plus nine to the three halves power, we just simplify that to 27 secant cubed. So in the denominator, we get 27 times secant cubed. And again, if you've been following along in my previous videos on trig substitution problems, you know that I always remind you to not forget the factor of dx, which we calculated that as three times secant squared. And this simplifies nicely and coincidentally we get this to simplify to one over secant, which is exactly what we found in the previous problem. So here, if we take our time to simplify that, looks like you can cancel out a factor of three. Think of 27 as three times nine. So we get a factor of one over nine. You can cancel two factors of secant out, leaving you with one in the denominator. So including all the steps of the simplifying here, we get first one over secant, which again, from the previous problem, we know we can flip that to cosine of theta. So we get one over nine times cosine of theta, d theta, and that integrates to sine of theta, or one over nine times sine of theta plus c. And again, you know what to do from here. Create your conversion triangle to back substitute. Here, the triangle, that comes from our substitution, x equals three tangent theta. All right, so let's go ahead and put that down here. Our original substitution, three tangent theta. We're gonna solve that first for tangent theta. So let's write that as x over three. And now we can identify our sides thinking of tangent as the opposite side divided by the adjacent. So if we go ahead and create our conversion triangle, we 
looks like relative to our angle theta, we're gonna go with the opposite side as of being length x and the adjacent side of length three. And no surprise, because you've gone through a few problems, you know what's gonna happen. The hypotenuse, the third side, that comes out to the square root expression, the square root of x squared plus nine. And if you don't see that connection, just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side, the hypotenuse here. All right, and what we wanna convert is sine of theta. So right from your conversion triangle, we can determine it. Think of sine of theta as the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if we just read off our sides, relative to the angle theta, the opposite side is of length x, and the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus nine. And we just need to now plug that in here, and we get our antiderivative as one over nine times x divided by the square root of x squared plus nine plus c. And there we go. This one, I don't wanna say it was an easy problem. Again, for many Calc 2 students, the difficulties here are just in recognizing what to do with that three halves power. However, this is a standard problem for a Calc 2 course. So once you go through and really understand this problem, you should have no problem with other ones that are similar to this. I hope you really learned a lot from this problem, especially recalling the basics of algebra. If you're enjoying the content and learning a lot, support the channel, like, and subscribe.